horror, five pathogens detected in the body of a man from Heilongjiang, Beijing activates mobile cabin. Deflation or not? China races to avoid plunging into a winter of economic despair. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Horror, five pathogens detected in the body of a man from Heilongjiang, Beijing activates mobile cabin. Amid the escalating epidemic outbreak in China, with the emergence of unidentified pneumonia, the situation has become particularly severe in the northeast and north. On November 23, a man from Heilongjiang disclosed a test report indicating positive results for at least five pathogens. He posted on Douyin, the Chinese TikTok platform, on November 23, using the usernames New Poison King and Master of Five Poisons. He mentioned, the hospital can test for eight viruses, and I am infected with five. According to his test report, the five results included influenza virus type A, pneumonia chlamydia, respiratory syncytial virus, adenovirus, and Coxsackie virus B group. These are all pathogens known to cause respiratory diseases. The video has garnered significant attention from netizens. Many people have commented, sharing their own or others' cases. For instance, I saw one at the end of last month, a teacher with COVID-19, chlamydia, mycoplasma, and hand-foot-mouth, all transmitted by students. On the internet, many people are also sharing various peculiar symptoms. On November 26, in Wenzhou, Zhujiang province, a little girl experienced a sudden collapse and convulsions attributed to a high fever. Fortunately, the incident took place while the girl was at the hospital, and the nearby doctors promptly provided assistance to her. Dr. Jiang Chunming, the head of the pediatrics department at the First People's Hospital of Hangzhou, disclosed that in a recent case, he treated a three-year-old girl with a prolonged high fever that showed no signs of improvement. Upon examination, it was discovered that the girl was simultaneously infected with five different pathogens, respiratory syncytial virus, rhinovirus, adenovirus, mycoplasma pneumoniae, and influenza hemophilid bacillus. This combination of five virus infections is considered a complex and relatively rare case of mixed infection. Typically, children are more commonly infected with a single pathogen. While there is a lower probability, some children may be infected with two or even multiple pathogens in a superimposed manner. However, in cases of mixed infection with multiple pathogens, the severity of the condition is often heightened. The current widespread outbreak of the epidemic has placed a heavy burden on medical systems in various locations, including Beijing, Tianjin, and Liaoning. Many doctors and nurses have expressed the sentiment that they feel as if they have returned to the time when pandemic control measures were initially eased. Particularly, Beijing, as the capital with the best medical and health conditions, has ironically become the epicenter and severely affected area of the outbreak. In an effort to relieve the pressure on these hospitals, Peking University Women and Children's Hospital launched a mobile cabin on November 22 as a temporary infusion room. Rumors circulating online suggest that a significant number of those infected, including children, are experiencing white lung, and there have been numerous fatalities. However, the Chinese Communist Party continues to make efforts to conceal the extent of the situation. Deflation or not? China races to avoid plunging into a winter of economic despair. The National Bureau of Statistics of China released the Consumer Price Index CPI, for October on November 9, which dropped 0.2% year-on-year, marking another decline since July. From this data, the author named Black Noise analyzes the deflation problem and the threat to China's economy. Deflation or not? What is deflation? It refers to a decline in the overall price level of a country, that is, a general decline in prices, which is also accompanied by economic recession, insufficient consumer demand, and increased unemployment. According to the mainstream view, the standard for determining deflation is actually simple. 
Economists generally believe that when the Consumer Price Index, CPI, continues to fall, it indicates deflation. According to this standard, China's economy has already deflated. This is a single-factor deflation criterion. There is also an all-factor judgment standard. Deflation does not only lead to a drop in prices, but it is also accompanied by a reduction in the quantity of money, a drop in the velocity of money circulation, and an economic depression. According to this standard, China can also be considered to have entered a pre-deflation state. However, due to its huge size, the Chinese economy is indeed an extremely complex system. In addition, the Chinese government has a strong power to intervene in the economy, and economic theory is generally aimed at a pure market economic environment, so it may not be advisable to apply the concept of deflation rigidly. So far, no country in the world has successfully defeated deflation. They have all suffered terribly from deflation. The most typical examples of deflation are the United States during the Great Depression in 1929 and Japan after the bubble economy burst in the 1990s. How bad was the Great Depression? There were many people who were hungry. Countless people's assets turned into liabilities overnight, and ordinary people could hardly find any jobs. The United States later became rich and powerful again, but the price paid by ordinary people during the Great Depression was too heavy. After Japan was impacted by the curse of deflation in the 1990s, its economy did not basically grow for the next 30 years. Although it has returned to a growth trend this year, it is not certain whether it can be said to have emerged from deflation. Just imagine what will happen if China cannot grow in the next 30 years. It is not good to compare China to Japan. When Japan fell into deflation, its per capita GDP exceeded that of the United States. So now Japan has not grown for 30 years, but is still among the top developed countries. This truly shows that a skinny camel is bigger than a horse. However, China's per capita GDP in 2022 was only one seventh that of the United States, and the quality of its industry was far inferior to Japan's. If China falls into deflation at this time, the consequences will definitely be unimaginable. The reality and future prospects of China's economy. Let's look at the producer price index (PPI). Statistics show that the industrial producer price index (PPI) in October fell by 2.6 percent year-on-year, and the decline expanded by 0.1 percent compared with September. This is the 13th consecutive monthly decline in PPI. This is worth discussing. Why is the price drop on the consumer side accompanied by a drop in product prices on the production side? The price drop can be explained as mainly caused by the price reduction of pork, but the double drop phenomenon shows that the problem is not that simple. The double decline is obviously due to the fact that the old problem of the economy has not been eliminated. That is, overcapacity. That is to say, too much is produced, but the demand is still too weak. According to data, in the first half of this year, the cumulative installed capacity of power batteries in China was 152.1 GWh, a cumulative year-on-year -year increase of 38.1%. However, during the same period, the cumulative output of power batteries was approximately 293.6 GWh, a year-on-year -year increase of 36.8 percent. In the first half of this year, the output of power batteries was nearly twice that of installed capacity, which means that the output was significantly higher than market demand. This is a real-life example of overcapacity. In summary, we can go one step further and look at the growth of GDP. According to the National Bureau of Statistics, China's GDP grew by 5.2 percent year-on-year in the first three quarters of this year, and is generally expected to exceed 5 percent in the fourth quarter. So here comes the core question: Why are GDP figures so good, but consumer prices and factory prices are falling? Where does this GDP come from? According to common sense, GDP and price index should have a very healthy synchronized growth. At this time, combined with the overcapacity just mentioned, we should have an answer. GDP is actually caused by overproduction and government investment, not because of economic recovery. 
Those overproduced batteries and the like are the main driver of GDP. In fact, the problem of insufficient demand is getting worse. It can be said that the ailing Chinese economy has not taken the right medicine at all this year. Years of overcapacity and overinvestment have accumulated disadvantages and are still moving forward under the banner of GDP. However, the demand has not only failed to keep up in time, it is even further behind. The phenomenon of using poison to quench thirst by expanding production capacity and government investment to maintain high GDP growth continues. Does it matter whether to debate deflation? Now that debt problems and real estate problems are added to the mix, even if fiscal policy is launched to release water, it may not be able to let the water flow to where it should go, but it will most likely fill the debt hole. As a result, there are actually fewer stimulation methods available. So the question now is no longer to determine whether there is deflation, but how to prevent falling into an abyss-like winter of depression. How did the United States get out of the economic bottom in the past three years? You can look at what ordinary people in the United States say they are all spending their government relief funds. Many people on the internet said that tens of thousands of dollars were sent out one after another, but they were not all spent. U.S. stocks have also continued to rise to become a bull market, allowing investors to make money. Give money to the people, let them spend as much as they can, and force the economy to circulate this is the method of the United States and some Western countries. It is simple and crude but effective. Although China's consumption characteristics are different, it is always possible to issue large-scale unlimited consumption payments. If China still focuses on waiting for overseas demand to recover, arguing that there is no deflation instead of quickly treating the illness, then when the real trouble actually occurs, it could be an unprecedented crisis. Expanding domestic demand has been called for more than 20 years. Now, it is time to put it into practice. For some serious illnesses, there will be small signs in the early stages, but sometimes these signs are ignored, sometimes the illness is ignored, sometimes the early intervention methods are wrong, and in the end it becomes a real serious illness. Amid growing dissatisfaction, Chinese netizens talk about when to rebel. China is facing a severe economic downturn, with the real estate industry teetering on the edge of collapse, unemployment rates soaring, and the added strain of a pandemic resurgence overwhelming hospitals. Widespread discontent has erupted due to the authorities' perceived inaction. When to rebel? The time is now. On November 16, a netizen uploaded a video titled When to Rebel on the Chinese platform Billy Billy. While the video delves into historical factors such as the right moment, favorable conditions, and human elements that lead to uprisings, its implications for the current situation are clear, causing a commotion among netizens. In the video, it asserts, if you're contemplating rebellion, there must be a cause. Whether the government mistreats you, compels you to perform labor without compensation, or Mr. Huang, the landlord, borrows your money to buy a house, and if the housing market crashes with interest rates surpassing the house value, making repayment impossible. In essence, it must be shown that I was coerced, it's not my fault, it's the world's fault. In another video titled Observing the Night Sky, Signs of the Downfall of the Han Dynasty, the creator analyzed celestial phenomena corresponding to historical dynastic changes. Although the discussion centered on the fall of the Han Dynasty, many netizens associated the video with the current situation in China, asserting that the video's illusions were too apparent. Many Chinese netizens exclaimed, What are you risking your life for? While others boldly declared, Rebel now, it's now. China's military unrest, will someone raise the flag of rebellion? On an overseas social media platform, X, numerous users are engaged in discussions about the potential for a rebellion within the Chinese Communist Party's military. Yao Qing, a former colonel staff officer in the CCP's Navy, shared his views on X, stating, Currently, all it takes is for one group army to take the lead in raising the flag of rebellion, and that would be sufficient because everyone is watching and waiting, we just lack a leader. 
Throughout this year, the CCP's military has witnessed substantial purges, including the removal of high-ranking officials in the rocket force, the ousting of the newly appointed Defense Minister Li Shangfu on corruption charges, and the exposure of a group of top officials in the Military Equipment Development Department. Presently, the position of the Chinese Defense Minister remains vacant, with no successor appointed. Speculation from external sources suggests that these purged military leaders, initially promoted by top CCP officials, are now being removed, indicating a lack of stability in military morale and a lack of trust in the military leadership by the CCP. Analysis Li Keqiang's death awakens the nation, three types of people might rebel. Beyond military unrest, high-ranking officials within the CCP are entangled in intense infighting. On October 27, Li Keqiang, a recently retired Chinese premier, passed away suddenly in Shanghai. The official statement attributed his death to a sudden heart attack, prompting widespread external skepticism, with many suspecting Li Keqiang's death is tied to factional struggles within the CCP. Li Keqiang's death triggered a wave of public mourning, with people expressing sympathy for him and anger towards the authoritarian rule of the CCP. Masao Yato, the chief of the Taipei branch of Japan's Sankey Shimbun, posted on Facebook, asserting that whether Li Keqiang was murdered or died of illness, the CCP leadership cannot wash their hands of the Huanghe River regarding this incident. China expert Yukakawa commented that Li Keqiang's death has had a significant impact on the CCP's officialdom, leading officials to ponder, if even the premier is treated like this, what are we? A fox grieves over the death of a rabbit. This proverb is used derogatorily to refer to the forlornness that bad people feel upon learning the misfortune of their like. Currently, the CCP officialdom was already in a state of lying flat, and this incident will have an even greater impact. This accumulated impact will play a role in the future during a significant event. A ex netizen at Friedrich4th posted, stating, Li Keqiang's death has awakened many people. It has stirred those who, although aware of the decline of the CCP's regime, felt trapped with no way out. I am now telling you where the way out is. The way out is to prepare to join the founding groups that will inevitably emerge everywhere when the CCP collapses, to be ready to lead the way for them, to be prepared to contribute to the promotion of democratic transformation, and to be ready to use your efforts for the founding of the nation for the people, offsetting the crimes committed by the CCP and maintaining stability. The user asserted that as the CCP approaches collapse, the potential founders of a new emerging state within China can be broadly categorized into three groups. The first group comprises individuals who command the military, police, or other armed forces, those with access to weapons. The second group includes influential officials who currently hold the authority to deploy CCP stability maintenance resources, those with political power. The third group consists of entrepreneurs possessing organizational and mobilization capabilities, particularly those with wealth or business ownership, those with financial resources, and factories. He believes that the rebellion by these three groups may unfold in a specific sequence, but historical patterns suggest an eventual convergence of all three. For factors indicating the CCP's collapse in recent years, the CCP regime has teetered on the brink of collapse, marked by successive waves of public anti-communist sentiments. From the white paper movement to the recent anti-communist protests at the Apex Summit in San Francisco, the rallying cry of Communist Party stepping down echoes both domestically and internationally. As previously reported, independent TV producer Lee Jun shared his views in the Elite Forum, emphasizing that historically, when a regime is on the verge of collapse, for decisive factors usually emerge, a significant shift in public sentiment, internal divisions, economic downturn, and external threats. Currently, all four of these factors are fundamentally present within the CCP. Veteran Hong Kong media figure Yen Chuengo recently conveyed on Facebook a sense that China is on the cusp of profound change. He remarked, when the people are no longer afraid of the CCP, it's the CCP's turn to fear the people. Don't forget to comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. If you find the information helpful, please share this video with a friend to watch together. 
This will be a great source of motivation for our team to produce more and more quality and reliable videos. And also don't forget to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you for tuning in.